Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Webs from Slidenet over here. In this video, it is the first step towards understanding polymorphism. Morphism. I'm gonna talk about this statement which you've heard all the time, which says, a superclass reference variable can refer to a subclass object. Now if you've heard this before and if you've totally gone blank after reading this statement, don't worry about it. In this video, we'll understand exactly what this means. Let's take a simple class, say person. What are the different things that you can think about when you say there is a person out there. So you can talk about his name or her name, you can talk about age, you can talk about address and there are many other things that you can talk about. But for now let's stick to these three basic things. A class person or you can say anybody is a person, they have a name, they have an age and they have an address. And they have other things of course, mobile number, email, blah blah blah, we don't care about that. Now let's talk about someone else as well. Let's talk about a student. I'm gonna say class student. What are the different things that make you a student? Like if you're a student, what are the things you have? Well, you have a name, as usual, you'll have an age, you'll have an address, and there are other things that you will have, like marks, like a roll number maybe. So if you notice, these two classes that I've just created, you will notice something that the class student has a lot of things in common with the class person. In other words, it's actually everything which is a person plus some extra stuff like marks and roll number. So this is what is about inheritance. So in this case, we can clearly see that the student class is defining some extra attributes which are pretty much useless because they've already been defined inside the class person so we don't define them again what we do is we simply extend your person by saying class student extends person so by doing this we are saying that every student is a person which is true right so now if you see a class student has name age and address inherited from the super class person and it has its own fields like marks and roll number. Now let's talk about creating objects for this. So you would go here in, the, in your main, you'd probably say person p1 equals to new person. Same way you could make another object by saying p2 equals to new person, right? You can have objects of your student in the same manner by saying student s1 equals to new student. And the same way you can have s2. Now this is the normal assignment that you guys have been doing so far. Now let's talk about something twisted. Can we cross them out? That's the first question that you have. Let's say person P3 equals to new student. Is this possible? If you notice right now, there is no error whatsoever. I've said person P3, which means the reference variable P3 is of type person. And on the right hand side, I have an object of type student. So is this possible? Is this valid? Let's take a look at this in the slides and try to understand what happens when we do kind of stuff like this. For a second, forget programming. Let's talk about the real world. Every student is a person. Do you guys agree with that? Of course. I'm, I'm a student. I'm a person. My neighbor is a student. He's a person. That's true, right? But if you talk about the grandpa who lives opposite my house, he's a person, but he is not a student. This is a very obvious thing. Every object in Java of the class student is also an object of the class person. Now this is natural that you have in the real world. Whatever is there in the real world has been mimicked into Java the same way things work. So here in Java, if you have the student which is a subclass and if you have the person which is a superclass, every object of student is also an object of the class person. Now remember that an object of a class can be referenced by a variable or any ancestor type. Now at this point, things are getting a little bleak for you guys. You're wondering what is going on. What am I talking about? But I'm sure you guys understood the real world stuff that I was talking about. The grandpa being a uh, person but not a student but myself being a student and being a person. So let's take a look at this example in a little more detail. So if you talk about a simple assignment statement that you have in Java, there is int x equals to 5. What do we do in this? We put the value of 5 inside integer x or we make the variable x contain the value 5. Whatever it is, it's very obvious and let's try to understand this in a different way. You see int x over here on the left hand side is a data type that can handle plain numbers like 5, 6, minus 3 and so on. That is why this assignment works perfectly because the LHS knows everything there is to know about the RHS. 
Let's take a look at that with our same example where I say person P equals to new student. When you say that person P equals to new student, you're saying that a reference variable of type person which knows only about name, age, address points to an object of type student which has name, age, address plus its own fields like rule number and marks. In other words, when you start using this in the program by saying p.name, p.age, p.address, whatever values that p needs on the left hand side are present already on the right hand side. Hence, this assignment is perfectly valid. There is no problem with this. That let's take a look at the statement. Ask yourself always this question. Does the RHS or the object on the RHS over here have everything there is on the LHS? What the reference knows. So before and now let's take a look at this little example over here. Int x equals to 5.5. You know that this is not valid. Why is this not valid? Because on the right hand side what you have is 5.5. On the left hand side what you have is a variable x of type integer. Um, integer means that it only knows about 5. It does not know about the decimal point. It does not know about the 0 0.5 which follows the decimal point. And therefore this assignment does not work directly. And you guys use typecasting, right? This doesn't work directly. Same way, let's try to understand this assignment over here where we say student s equals to new person. When you say that student s equals to new person, you are saying that a reference variable of type student which knows everything about name, age, address, roll number, marks is pointing to an object that of type person which only has name, age and address. In other words, when you try to use this in your code by saying s dot age, s dot name, s dot address that is perfectly fine but s dot roll number s dot marks are not gonna give you any values because there is no such value on the right hand side in other words this assignment would be illegal because certain values like rule number and marks on the left hand side are not present on the right hand side therefore you cannot access them when you're saying s dot this and s dot that that won't work right and therefore this assignment is illegal so let's take a look at the two cases that we have here case one all the values needed by the LHS are present in the RHS therefore it works case 2 all the values that are needed by the LHS are not present inside the RHS therefore this is an illegal assignment this is the simplest way we can talk about type compatibility now let's go back to our NetBeans and try to see how this type compatibility so right now like you said by person p3 equals to new student I'm gonna say p3 dot you can see age name address that's perfectly fine however now if I say student s3 equals to new person as soon as I do this there is gonna be an error because s3 dot as you see s3 has roll number s3 has marks but the person object over here on the right hand side doesn't know about those things therefore this would be an illegal assignment if you directly try to assign it of course there is a way of typecasting this just the way you do typecast from double to integer but we are going to talk about this in the next video but for now all I want you guys to understand is that this assignment is possible and this is impossible because of the reasons I stated earlier. So in the next video I'm going to dig further deeper into polymorphism and we're going to talk about dynamic method dispatch mostly which I'm not sure about right now. But in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.